Welcome to the art and science of stick fighting, where I'm going to teach you the in and outs of fighting with a short weapon, particularly the stick. However, this could also represent a bladed weapon, like a machete or a short sword. It could also represent a baseball bat or a walking cane or perhaps a golf club. Any improvised tool between one and three feet works well with a short stick system. Now, before we get into stick fighting, there are some fundamental techniques that we need to learn, such as how to hold the stick correctly, how to stand, and how to wield it to maximum effect. Stick fighting literally begins with learning how to hold the weapon properly. How you grip the stick can affect how hard you can hit and how far you can reach. I'm currently holding the weapon in a natural grip, sticking out of the thumb side of my fist. There's the middle grip, which grabs the center of the stick, and the reverse grip, where the most of the weapon sticks out through the pinky side of my hand. However, these don't afford me the same amount of reach or power that the natural grip does. So that's the one that we're going to be concentrating on right now. Make sure that your hand wraps all the way around the weapon. Latch your thumb firmly over your fingers so that there are no openings through which the stick can easily be stripped. If you have your thumb up along the shaft of the weapon, you can see that there's a gap between my fingertips and the palm of my hand. The stick could be pulled out and levered through that gap. So close up any gaps in your grip. This is the heel or butt of the weapon. It should be approximately one to three inches long. Sometimes you'll see people fighting with it longer. However, if I'm using this much down here, I have less to hit with up here. And it can easily be grabbed, and now this becomes a fulcrum, and they can lever it right into your own head. So I like to leave one to three inches on the bottom of my stick, enough that I can strike with and I can hook but not enough that my opponent can get his whole hand firmly on the heel of that weapon. If he can only get part of his hand on, he can't get a lot of leverage. You should always have more. This is the tip of the weapon. You want to be striking with the top one to three inches of the stick. Striking down lower actually reduces the amount of power that you can deliver into the target. Now that you know how to hold the stick, it's important to know where to hold the stick. You want to hold the stick in front of you, offering you the most amount of protection. You could hold the stick high, you could hold the stick low, but right now we're going to concentrate on the middle open guard. An open guard is any time that the weapon is on the same side as the arm holding it. A closed guard is when the weapon's on the opposite side of your body. So we're going to concentrate on using this middle open guard. Use your free checking hand to guard and check your opponent's weapon. So hold it at about shoulder height and out in front of you just a little bit. You don't want it in too close and you don't want it way out in front. You want to bend this arm at about 90 degrees. Next, it's important to know how to properly stand when holding the weapon. First, I'm in a neutral position. This is a great position for when you're receiving instruction or perhaps watching a match. You can stand with your stick in front of you holding both ends or put one end under your armpit, wrap your free arm around the weapon and grab your wrist. These are both acceptable positions so that the tip is not moving around, you're not using it to lean on. It is a weapon and we should respect it as such. But in the neutral position, I'm not yet ready to engage an opponent. In order to do that, I want to step forward with my dominant leg. Since I'm right-handed, I step forward with my right leg and my feet are now one shoulder width wide and one shoulder width long as well. I'm on the balls of my feet, providing me with a stable, balanced position from which I can move quickly in all directions. Next, I want to think about how I would close the distance on my opponent. And to do that, I step forward with my front leg into a forward stance. This is a great way to reach out and hit your opponent. But sometimes you want to reach all the way to your maximum reach, and that's a lunge stance. Way out here. 
I'm reaching out to strike the opponent from super far away for my lunge stance, but usually we'll just use a forward stance. Now, you're also going to want to retreat when you need to be defensive. So you could lean back over your back leg, two thirds of the weight on your back leg and one third on your front, which remains slightly bent. You don't want to straighten that front leg. And if you want to retreat with the front leg, you can assume a cat stance. So now we have a whole range of stances from our neutral fighting position into a back stance or a cat stance or a forward stance or even a deep lunge stance. By learning your footwork now and practicing these stances, you can then couple them with the strikes that we're going to learn next and you'll be all set to go out and start fighting with the stick. So you know how to hold the stick and you know how to stand. Now we get to learn how to swing the stick. Now there are many different ways to swing a stick, but there are some universal angles. The pattern I'm going to show you right now is made up of nine basic strikes. There are striking patterns that only have five strikes. There are some that have 12 strikes, but this nine strike system is very versatile and easy to remember. It's shaped like an asterisk, as you can see on the striking board here to my left. Strike number one is the habitual method of attack. When someone grabs a weapon, they usually pick it up over their right shoulder, if they're right hand dominant, and swing it in a downward arc from right to left. Passing through the center mass of the body, you could strike high for the head, you could strike low for the legs or hips, but we're going to strike for the center of the body. And then we're going to pass through the body about 45 degrees and then pull the stick up into the next ready position. I'm in a high closed guard ready for the mirror strike, strike number two, downward diagonally from left to right, passing through the center mass of the body stopping about 45 degrees and then pulling into the next guarded position. I'm in an open middle guard. And here I strike strike number three th horizontally through the target. It's a forehand strike with the palm up. Come all the way through the target and I stop on the other side. My hand is still in front of me. Don't let your hand come behind you. You've opened your flank. Strike number four, palm down, passes through the center mass of the body with the tip of the weapon, stopping on the other side, and then chambering down low in a low open guard. Strike number five comes from the bottom right and passes diagonally upward through the target to the left and then whips down ready for strike number six, which passes upwards from left to right and then comes around over the head for strike number seven, straight down through the center line of the body and then strike number eight, turn your palm up as you come upwards through the center line. Pull the tip of the weapon back to your hip for strike number nine, which is actually a thrust or stab. And again, all of these are right now about at the center of your body. You could aim them high at the head or you could aim them low. Now when I practice on the striking board here, I want to come within one to three inches of the target. That'll teach me proper distancing. I strike number one, tracing the line with the tip of my stick, bringing it up over my left shoulder for strike number two. And then to the side, strike three, horizontally. Strike four, palm down, horizontal. Strike five, diagonally up. Strike six, diagonally up. Strike seven, straight down through the target. Strike eight, palm up and strike nine, thrusting into the center. Practice until this becomes smooth and natural. Don't be too fast. You want, I mean, speed is okay, but don't sacrifice your accuracy for speed. It's better that you be accurate in this drill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Practice those basic strikes until they feel fluid and natural, and then we'll be ready for the next lesson. Your homework for lesson 1.1 is to first practice assuming various guarded positions with the stick. Next, practice moving in the different stances, advancing and retreating, and then 
Practice the nine basic strikes. As you train, remember, stay on the balls of your feet, maintaining a light, balanced stance. And as you perform your strikes, strike all the way through the target.